All opinions expressed by the program participants are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Upscale Love for You. The program participants... Opinions are based on the information that they consider from their own knowledge. No expressions or accuracy is related to upscale love for you. Hello, everyone. This is yours truly, Dr. Fabulous, the founder and CEO of Upscale Love for You. Thank you so much for taking the time out to join us on Tantalizing Talk Thursday, where the conversations are always hot and exciting. So stay tuned and get ready because we are going to have an absolute fabulous good time. And guess what, y'all? Smooches. Mwah. Hey, it's your girl, Special K. Welcome to Upscale Love for You. A big thank you to each and every one of you for joining in to tonight's show. You're guaranteed to have a great time with our hot topic and tantalizing talk. Welcome each and every one to the episode of Upscale Love. I'm your boy, Action J. We will discuss all the juicy, season hot topic. I guarantee tonight's show is going to be very, very hot and excited. So I want you to sit back, grab your popcorn, and enjoy the show. This is yours truly, Lady T, coming live from the 305. Come join us on Thursday night for Tantalizing Talk at 8.30. It will be hot, hot, hot. Here we go. All right. So welcome, welcome, everyone. This is yours truly, Dr. Fabulous from Upscale Love for You Tantalizing Talk Thursdays. And tonight we are going to have just an open forum. Now, let me tell you the real deal, holy feel. You know, everybody is a little tired. Everybody is excited because next week, Thursday, we won't be on here. We'll be preparing for our cruise. And you know, I'm so excited tonight. We could talk about lollipops and raindrops if we wanted to. That's just how excited I am about this cruise next week. But everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome. And if this is your very first time coming on, please don't let this be your last. And so as we were waiting to get started, we actually had a conversation and I know we're supposed to be talking about love and lust, but tonight I'm just going to open up the floor, whatever your heart desire and you want to talk about, let's just talk about it. Now they were asking and I heard them say, because I said before I went on hold that I can be very submissive. I know I was the best wife in the world and my husband probably was about five feet seven and I stand five feet 10. But when I say that did not make a difference in who he was, he was definitely the man with the master plan. And I fell in order because that was what the qualities I liked about him because he was such a, a how can I say, a leader, the leader of the household. So therefore I didn't have to worry about that. And I saw something the other day that was so good and I got to find it so I can read it for all the men on here. And I was like, you know, this is definitely what I'm talking about because you know, everybody, some women look for the white collar men, some like a thug, some like them wearing Timberlands. Well, this one here said, it, the little saying said it all because you know, I can, I can hang with the ones at the white house or you can play dice on the street corner. You know, I can fit in where I need to. But it says, for a king of mine, he's got to be hood enough to protect me, man enough to respect me, romantic enough to please me, and a king strong enough to lead me. And so, you know, I said, boy, that was dead on the money. Because when I read that, I was like, yes, that is definitely the type of man that I would love to be my new partner in life because that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for that person. And I don't, you know, some men don't speak with that very white voice. Some may have a nice, soft little voice, but I don't want him standing in the mirror as much as me. And I definitely don't want him to say, hey, girl, how you doing? Because that would kind of like freak me out. So that's what I say I'm looking for when it comes to a man being strong enough. So I done went all around the block and back and forgot to introduce my panel and my co-host and all my crew. 
members. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Lady T, because when I start talking, I just go to rambling on. So Lady T, it's all we about We know, you. Dr. Fab, but thank it's you. All about that you. was wonderful. That was I know, so I wonderful. know. I had to bring it on home. <laughs> this is yours truly, Lady Lady T, coming live from the 305. And you know what? Um, I just want to thank every one of you for coming on, for uh, being faithful and making this podcast hot and sizzling. So I'm going to slide on over to, um, let's, let's go with Nasty J. I definitely want to hear what he has to say. Well, good night, everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning <laughs> in. told you. I can't help it. Good night, honey. Well, good night mean hello, or just like you guys said, good morning from Jamaica. And good okay. night, then, as a form of introduction or introduce myself. Okay, yeah. one more. Guaguan. Guaguan. So, Guaguan, so, everybody, pick up yourself. <laughs> Have a tune to the podcast. We love the support so over the past months, and it's doing a great job. So, thank you for tuning in. And it'll be a great show. I hope everyone participates and express how they feel about the topics. Okay? What that song? Better? Better, better man, better man. <laughs> More fire, oh, more fire. Okay. And we're going to slide on down to the smooth talking, distinguished brother. Good evening, everyone. This is the distinguished brother coming to you from Snellville, Georgia, here down south. It's my job to open your mind, get you to fantasize, tantalize you a little bit, and get you to think about all the things that we talk about in the evenings all the things that you may want to talk about in the bedroom and all the things you should talk about all the time. Ooh. Well, all righty now. Go on with your bed self. And last but not least for this evening, we bring into you the one and only Special K. Hey. Special K. Okay, yeah, we having problems say, hearing you. Uh, I'm mobile right now, so I don't know. You is that any any better? It's a little better, but we understand. Okay. okay, well, just good evening, everyone. This is Special K coming to you from the nine one two Savannah, Georgia. Just want to say good evening, welcome, and thank you all for joining. All right. <laughs> And to, like she said, for everyone, if this is your first time, don't let this be your last. Now, um, Dr. Feelgood is not here this evening. He had an emergency that arose. Someone passed and he had to take an emergency fight. So let's keep him in our prayers and give him our condolences to the family. And I just would like to say, we are going to miss you, um, Dr. Feelgood, but God is able and he'll keep you. And also, before we get started, I want to say um, next week was the week that we were all supposed to wear pink to recognize um, Breast Cancer Month, and we did not get a chance. So I'm going to just say to all of you who are, or if you know anyone who has been a survivor of breast cancer, and I have a very close friend. She lives in Atlanta, but she we've been knowing each other since a little girl in um, middle school. And her name is Tanya Smith. And if she's listening or she should happen to come on and view this video, I want to tell her congratulations. God was good because she had a double mastectomy and she is definitely a beautiful person mind, body, and spirit. So if you know anyone that has come over that challenge, that has made it through, because you know, cancer can be one of those things that just mm, get in and take you out like grease lightning. But I want to say she is a survivor. And if there is anyone else that would like to pay homage to someone that they may know, that has had cancer and that has overcome that obstacle, the floor is open. You're more than welcome to share. Dr. Fab, can you make me a co-host, please? Sure thing. One moment, please. Well, I would like to say something. Go right ahead. 
so I personally do not know anyone. Um, no, let me take that back. My great aunt is a survivor of breast and colon cancer. So yes, I want to say that's the big, that's a tough one there. So to all the survivors, you did it, you overcame it. Um, I personally lost my grandmother to breast cancer. So it's, ooh, it's, this month means a little, it's very, very special to me. Um, we watched her, unfortunately, you know, overcome it, but then it came back and unfortunately it took her life. But to all the survivors, you did well with your fight and you made it. And that's a wonderful thing. Yes, it is. Okay. So to try to guide and get back on topic, everybody know what a platonic relationship is. Everybody has had that male friend or that girlfriend that you were, you were really friends. You were sticking in thieves. And then in an instant of a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, you say, dog, he look good. Or he says, dog, she look good. And they always ask that question, can a man and a woman be just friends and nothing more? Well, our topic this evening is for being in a platonic relationship, how far would you go? Would you cross the line of a platonic relationship for love or lust? So I'm going to open this up to Distinguished Brother to get us started. Hi. I'm coming at this from real life experience. Yes, you men and women can be platonic. Mm -hmm. And I say that because I have a friend that I have been with since ninth grade. We talk maybe two, three times a month. But when we talk, we pick right up where we left off. There are no gaps, no odd feelings. And we've never done anything. We've just been friends. So I know that it can be done. On the other hand, though, you do run into those females every now and then that if they don't up front put you in that friend zone and they leave that door open, don't let something happen because it might just be that one time that she needs somebody, you need somebody, and something might actually pop off. But for the most part, I would say, yes, men and women can be platonic friends. You just have to establish those boundaries and keep those boundaries. Okay. Now, with that same token, with that being said, if you dig deep in your back pocket, can you tell me if you was ever physically attracted to her? Of course. Of course. Right. We were attracted to, we were physically attracted, but because of the way the relationship started, we were both in school. We were both eggheads, you could say, and it just developed from there. It never went any further than that. Um, I even have a second friend, female friend that I've been with for years now, and nothing has ever come of that. So I know that it can be done. Oh, the next question I want to ask, if you're with the person for a period of time, and hear me out, if you're with this person for a period of time, do you start to grow feelings? You can. I mean, that's a natural course for a man and a woman, especially if you go on the belief that Men aren't going to just be talking to you to be talking to you. They're not going to talk to you if they're not somewhat attracted to you. So obviously that can always take place. Mm -hmm. Yet, being adults, I still have the perspective that if it's established up front, there's no need to worry about it on the back end. Even taking into consideration back years ago, even before I met my wife, um, I had a relationship with a Cub Scout leader. She was a very nice looking lady, 
very feminine, very poised. But because of her position as leader of the scouts that my son was in, you know, we established that up front. There could be nothing between us because we didn't want there to be any problems from the scout system or confusing my son. So if you are two grown adults, you should be able to establish those boundaries and just be friends. Okay, I, I, I hear you, but this is what I'm saying, you know, most of the time. And like they say, you got to have that strength to say no. It's almost like a drug. Because I never forget my college friend. I mean, we were the best of friends and I'm not going to call his name because his wife's still a little jealous <laughs> of our friendship. But it was like, I liked him, <laughs> but I did not want to date him because I always was trying to figure out, is he all the way a hundred percent? Oh, I shouldn't have said that God, because I know we're being recorded, but I liked him. He was nice and everything, but I did not want to take it to the next level. So he started dating somebody and I started dating someone and look like I would just get so, ooh, I would get so evil and so mean when I saw him with this person, but yet I didn't want to be with him like that. And so when I got ready to get married and everything, I sent him a wedding invitation. And he said, well, before you get ready to get married, I have to make this confession. He said, I always thought that you would have been my wife, but I never wanted to make that first move. And it did some, it clenched my heart. Not that I was getting ready to turn around and say, oh, child, I can't marry you because I'm going to marry my best friend. Because we were like, best friends, bosom buddies, but out of all the time we were together, we never kissed, we never made any sexual advances, but it was like, when we got together, it was like the best thing since ice cream, you know? So I believe you can have that type of relationship, but like doctor, like distinguished brothers say, you got to set boundaries. So I'm gonna come on over here to answer because Anson going to always put the fuel to the fire and then I'm going to come back to you, Tata. Now, if you have a relationship with someone, and I say a friendship, a platonic friendship, and like Distinguished Brother said, one night it, be, it might be cold and breezy and you got that window open and they come over, do you turn and try to make that move? Or do you continue to hold back on reserve, regardless of how you're feeling? Do you hold back on reserve and not cross that line? Anson, that's for you. Well, I have more fem or female friends than male friends, so I understand the whole platonic aspect. It is definitely a thing. But platonic is only platonic if you keep it platonic. So to answer your question, if the situation arise where that might happen, it all depends on the person. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it all depends on, you know, how it's, it's just like in any other situation. If it's someone you're attracted to, then if it go, if it, the opportunity presents itself, it presents itself. The whole mm -hmm. reason this platonic is because you didn't let it get that way. But if it comes down to it get, getting that way and you choose to let it go that way, then guess what? It's no longer no longer a platonic friendship. But it all boils down to choice. Okay. But to answer your question, would I? Most likely not. Okay. Because if, if I'm single, then yeah, it could go down. <laughs> okay. It could go down, but I'm not saying it would go down. Gotcha. Tata, -ta, hold your thought because you I'm I'm coming to you next. But I listen, y'all. I I've been doing this show for right at two years. And if I don't look over at the chat, I always miss what's going on over in the chat. But someone asked me because 
my husband was shorter than me. And let me um, let you all know, my husband, we not divorced or anything. My husband is deceased now seven years. But it said that because I'm 5'10 and my husband was shorter than me, was I able to move past my insecurities? I was never insecure about his height nor my height because he had such a demeanor. It didn't even matter. I'm not going to say if he was a midget, it would have been okay. Oh, excuse me. Little people is the better phraseology. But to say his height didn't bother me because he just carried himself like he could have been six feet four. And I know this is something bad to say, even though he was short, he was a real, he was just, he was just, it was undescribable how he carried himself. So it didn't bother me. So now, now they ask somebody, you're meeting shorter guys. It's up to you to make that decision. If that's something that you want to try or whatever, because since my husband has been deceased, I have a new black book and I say, I don't want nobody under six feet. And so that's just something I'm doing because my husband was shorter than me. And now that I'm single again, I'm not really looking for a short man. And maybe that's bad for me to say because I haven't even met a short man that comes to me with the qualities that I'm looking for. So I can't say that. And maybe if I do, and they have the qualities that I'm looking for, I might give it another chance. But right now, I'm not, mm -hmm. you know, feeling short. I'm feeling timber, tree, tall, climb, mountaintop. You know, that's what I'm, you know. So I hope you can read between the lines. Um, four six six three six one. I hope you're getting it. And if you don't, inbox me. And we'll have a more deeper conversation, okay? So you can put a smiley face or a sad face, and I'll take it from there. But let listen, just let it happen naturally. Because, honey, the short one might just be that one for you, okay? So, Tata, I'm back at you, girl. You can put up all of these here, um, what you call them, memes, or I don't know what you call them. But anyway, it's all on you, Tata. Welcome, welcome, and welcome back, sunshine, to Kira. All the new faces, Shayla Williams, welcome, welcome. And don't let this be your last time. So Tata, bring it on. Tell me about it. If you got a good friend and you all are platonic, strictly platonic, no love, no none of that, no mm-mm-mm, how can you, would you remain in a platonic relationship or would you cross that line when it comes to lust and love? Well. I did. <laughs> I used to have um I used to have a friend that we were very close. We were friends and I didn't really like want to explore um cuz I respected him, but um you know, he expressed that I just feel like once you do draw that line, like once you cross that line, I feel like there's really no going back. So it's like that's why I feel like, do you cross it? You know, is it going to change things? And is it, it, sometimes things don't go the way we just plan because that's what life is. And so um, I would hate to lose a good friend, someone that's important to me because I wanted to explore feelings and then it doesn't really go anywhere. And the person ends up hurt. I don't know. So I tell you, I think, that's I, I also think it's easily some people can you know confuse it with what friends with benefits is which is very different so it's like you can have a platonic friend which you have things in common this is someone and then you see okay this person you you may have feelings for this person or maybe you develop or something or maybe you want to explore it and then you have like friends with benefits that you know but I think that needs to be that needs to be discussed. That needs to be because you need once you cross that line, um, you're you need to accept that maybe things won't be the same as they were. I've seen cases where people explore things and it works out. Um, I also think it also depends on the person's character and their 
and their maturity level because once you cross that line making sure okay well if things don't work out you know having the maturity to say we can still be two adults and we can still be friends and and dish it out um but it doesn't always end that way so okay well tata i'm gonna stop you in mid-sentence now mm -hmm. you, crossed you you crossed that line from platonic and then you became sexual and <clears throat> The person was physically attracted to you, but they were, once you did it, they didn't come up to the task of what you were expecting in bed. How do you transition back to just a normal friendship or will you always be thinking, I can't believe I did this and he wasted my time or it could be on the other shoe. I can't believe I did that and I wasn't a bit of good. So, how do you do it? In my case, I mean, I've I've gone through it in multiple, and it, it it was different scenarios. Um, well, give us some scenarios, Tata. <laughs> um, well, when well, um, so I've I mean I I think I've said it before, but if those are not familiar, when I was younger, I identified as bisexual, so I did both parties. Now. I had a case where I had very close friends with a female and we have been, we grew up together. We were friends and we, we kind of like explored, okay, like, you know, let's explore it. But that happened, you know, like naturally just, it kind of just like happened. It, it's not something like that we discussed, it just like happened. We were there and, and it, it, you know, like we just saw it as like we were just messing around and things kind of went to normal. Like it was just, it just happened naturally. Now in other, in there was another much later, um, I had a, an occasion with a guy and we were just friends and we were talking and we discussed like, okay, we're good friends, but I don't kind of like, I, I would like to explore maybe like what it would be like to maybe like date, um, but, you know, like, I don't want to offend you or I don't want it to affect, you know, our friendship. But it kind of did. He was a little jaded um, because I I'm I I used to be very tomboyish in the sense where it's like if this war serves me, it serves me and I keep it moving or like I just don't want to catch feelings situation. So he caught feelings I didn't and that didn't end well. Um I mean, one thing that I think I've expressed in several occasions, I think that I wear my heart on my sleeves and I try to be honest because I don't want nobody wasting my time and I don't want to waste nobody's time. So, but that, like I said, it just really depends on people's characters and their demeanor and like um, maturity level. Like if that's something that it happens naturally, like, okay, like I, I'm with this person. I don't have to force it. I could be next to this person and I could be watching TV with this person. I'm speaking to this person. I have something in common with this person. I feel like that's what a relationship should be. That's where we all should start. Like, uh, that's what marriage it, it, so it's I feel like it's good that you start with someone that you guys can have in, something in common and if it leads to that well that's great because this person knows me we started out as friends and it grew and it just happened naturally but uh if you force it you know I just think you need to you need to discuss it go with the flow and if, eventually as things start building if you cross that line being you know being able to discuss it and say okay this is where we are is this going to affect the relationship is this going to affect the friendship do we continue to explore this do we not explore this I, I think that needs to be said um because just sometimes things can be awkward you know or like if it doesn't work out like and somebody gets hurt you know mm. okay so listen I'm going to say this because Tata, you you're you're okay with me saying this, right? Because you've shared that you were bisexual. But mm -hmm. in being bisexual, do you feel like sometimes you're measuring up the differences between being with a woman and being with a man when it comes to the relationship? Or have you transformed over to just one particular sex now 
because I well, know it I'm has to solely, be. I'm, I'm solely um, just with males, but okay. I feel so, like with so me, I don't, I don't really words. see a difference though. Like, I don't really see a difference. Like for me in my case, like I'm, I know that maybe on other females that are bisexual or maybe whatever they identify with, like, you know, maybe they, they have a different standard when they're with a female as to a post with a male. For me, the standard is the same. Like I'm, when I'm with someone, I'm looking to someone that makes me feel comfortable. That makes me feel laughed. That makes me feel like it's safe that to be vulnerable. Like those are things like, I don't really care if it's a female or a male. Um, but I do know that when you're, you know, there's people that are bisexual or maybe they're, you know, they're gay or, or, they're lesbians or whatever it is and maybe or if they're experimenting or the, and they're in that questioning phase then you know they could say well like I have a different standard when I'm in so that that also varies too um maybe the person that you're with is not the same person that could have offered you something else so I just feel like it's for me it's it's different but I guess it varies person to person right okay then well, all right. Well, I'm going to turn this over to Lady T, and she is going to take us through that zone, the 305 zone, if you will. Okay. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Um, So as far as a platonic relationship goes, friendship is friendship. I cherish that with all my heart. And those who know me, know me well. I will give my all to you. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, if I care for you like that, I do not want to cross that line. I may lust after you. Oh, yeah, I may have little fantasies and everything, but um, <laughs> I just not the little <laughs> fantasy. you know, I can have all <laughs> these little daydreams. But, um, as far as going that next level, um, giving you my goodies, I don't think so. I don't think, I mean, I would tell you because I believe, you know, you should always be honest and, and you should be, you know, upfront. But as far as saying crossing that line, no. But I will let so, you know. Hey, let me ask you. Let me ask you, lady. Yeah. Is kissing crossing the line? Do you think you can give a person a passionate kiss and don't No. Go? I it, think I think that's crossing the line. Yeah. Yes, yes the any physical kiss, touch is crossing the line. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, because <laughs> the moment you kiss, then your vagina get butterflies and you oh. look a little bit hot, and then you want to go to that next level. <laughs> but then if you're controlling your that's just go ahead, Tata. Huh? -ta. Go ahead. Yes, Tasha, because it, it, it's true. It's, it's, yeah, I feel like anything, the, anything, if you act on it, anything like any kissing, anything, because really kissing can it, be cross. It can be because it's, it's, it turns into something intimate. It turns into something hot. You start fantasizing certain things. You're acting on it. So you're still technically at some point like crossing the line. So I do think it is. And that needs to be said. Like, okay, is it going to be awkward? And like I said, it, it just varies because kissing for one person may not be anything. Like, okay, we're just kissing. Uh, but then if you, like kissing can lead into other things. Uh, touching, rubbing, and then it, it starts escalating. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. The punani can <laughs> catch some feelings. Yes. <laughs> From a kiss. So that's going to be the most passionate kiss in the world. Is what the do you mean the most that passionate opens up kiss? Everything else. I can kiss you, you know, on the forehead. I can lust after you and then some guy come and just slowly passionately, you know, kiss me on the forehead. They go my vagina with the butterfly. But then, <laughs> if, you know, if I Ooh. kiss like Lady T, like, Lady T, Lady T, what? you got to be stronger than that. Okay, because no, of a kiss we're talking make about, you go into like, butterfly zone. I don't no, know what'll happen I'm if they lick you behind your ear. Well, I'll, I'll suck your ear lows. Okay. Listen, think about it. Think kind of, just close your eyes and think about it. You're lusting after someone, right? 
So let's right. say your work husband or whatever. And then you guys are in this heated conversation. And then you're ready to exit. And he just grabbed your face slowly and passionately. You know what he wants. <laughs> and he kissed you on the forehead. <laughs> Lady T, just let these people know your love language is physicality and you just admit <laughs> it. Just say it. Anything physical gets you going and that's not and a she, bad that's thing. That's being weak. That's being weak. That ain't that's being weak. That's not being weak. Hold up. Wait a minute. Let that me ain't talk. being weak. Let's talk. There, there are different levels of kissing. I can kiss you on the cheek and it's nothing. I You can kiss my hand and it's nothing. But he kissing but you on your forehead and you gonna minute, get wet. Wait a minute, Leanne. But when you're lusting, you know, after someone and they kiss you, come on now. You want to go to the next move? That he don't have to rub all up on you. He so, kiss you on that forehead, right? He kissing you, you on your forehead. He kissing you on your forehead. Leanne, no, I think maybe that might yeah. be a new Listen. spot for us, girl. Maybe we might need well, to have somebody I, lick us I, on our I get what she's saying. <laughs> it really does. It really just depends. Like they might kiss you on the forehead. But like it just varies because maybe with one person, that person may kiss you on the forehead and you don't think nothing of it. But when you have like, OK, you you say, OK, I have some kind of uh, sexual like I feel attracted to this person and the fact that this person is close. I think that sometimes we're in love with the idea of love or more or we're and where we want to explore like oh my god what happens if right now this person kiss me or if this person gets a little too close if this person just blows a little close if this person just rubs a little bit more i like you you in the back of your mind like that idea is there like okay and that that is it just depends it may be a touch it may be okay like i crossed that line like and it really depends the state of mind and it depends on the person. And maybe with one person, you don't feel that intense and you don't feel like, okay, I kissed her on the forehead. I don't feel like I, I kissed, but maybe if this person kissed you on your neck, you feel like that, that moment, it felt a little intimate. You're like, oh, I feel like I crossed that line. Like that kiss made me feel dirty. It may make you feel, you may feel one thing with one person and not necessarily with the other. Okay. Cause I just find a supply club and get it over with and just get it out of the system. No, no, no. See, I thought it was a new thing to lick me on my forehead and just turn me on. Because, you know, I know the sensitivity of the ears, but the forehead was something new. I was going to say, I got to get a new style wig because my wigs cover my forehead. <laughs> when I need you to close your eyes for a minute. When a guy passionately grabbed your face, uh -huh. Slowly approach your forehead uh -huh. and gently kiss you and back up. That that is a lust kiss. <laughs> See, I've never experienced that, so I can't tell well, you, you need to get if it is or not. I'm just gonna have close to, your eyes and let her. I got to find to me you. somebody. I'm gonna say, can you just lick my forehead for me, please? Because <laughs> I want to see if this gonna turn me on. Wow. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, all right. Kira, can you hear me, Kira? Kira, you available? What about Sunshine? Come here, Sunshine. Can you hear me? With a name like Sunshine. Y'all remember Sunshine in um, that movie? See, with... I wasn't going to go there. I wasn't going to go there. <laughs> you know, Sunshine, he say, he say, tell your mama you I'm not coming home. The... Beard one, you with me tonight? <laughs> Beard one. Yes, ma'am. Come on and give it to me. Yes, now, yes. We talking about, listen, because I just love to hear you talk. Now, see, you got to get that lick on the forehead. It's now, like, Bear, one, you want to me. know how to do it. See, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> listen, <laughs> if, if, when <laughs> Beer one just talked to me, I, it, it kind of sort now, and I listen to my friends out there in Radio Land. This is a young man, and I say he make my liver quiver. Not that you're not making my liver quiver because you know I can't, mm, y'all know, y'all, you know who you are, anywho. But nevertheless, you know, I have to make that clarification because <laughs> this is being recorded. But beer one, you got this platonic relationship, right? And you uh -huh. really, really, really physically attracted to her. 
but y'all such good friends. Do you think that a man of your stature could keep that relationship as strictly platonic, don't go any further, or would you cross that line one cold winter night and cross the line of love and lust between a platonic relationship? I mm -hmm. think that's a hard one. <laughs> Because mm, you know you want to rub up against that leg. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Man, you talking about <laughs> um, going against a platonic relationship and, and battling animalistic instincts? Oh, um, <clears throat> he that's say animalistic. Way. Woo, that's why I like to hear that voice. Mm -hmm. All right, um, let me pull back. Just uh, you know that first and then you kind of get to know him and you realize you accept the fact that it ain't going no that bag, you know, you can always have it. But if it's, you know, how y'all do that little flirting every now and then and, you know, y'all do a flirt here and there and you kind of drop the hand in. Nah, it's, it's definitely going to come a point when there's going to be a whole lot of shots being fired, depending on the situation. And it's hard because if you're a really good friend, you don't want to mess with that friendship. Right, so you kind of want right. to stay in that. But, but I mean, that's the whole point of shooting your shot, right? You know, you can't can't on um, win the Powerball if you don't play the game. So it's kind of one of those. If I I think I'm gonna hit a basket, so I'm gonna shoot that shot. Or yeah, she done friends on me already, so I'm gonna go ahead and and sit in my place. That's a hard one. I ain't gonna lie to you. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, you know what. You just you just stand still. Grow ten more years older, honey. Ten more years. We'll talk about that thing. Come on now. All right. Now coming over to the old Jamaican man himself. I need to know. He gonna give us the word on the island man. Wait, wait, and... wait, Doctor Pat. Wait. Uh huh. Uh huh. Now, beard one. Can you explain to the panel that passionate kiss on the forehead? Not lick the forehead. I'm talking about that passionate kiss on the forehead. Beard ain't never kiss oh. no woman on no forehead. He goes straight for the man. You probably want your forehead yeah, kiss. Yeah, that one now. I'm gonna tell you that 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 passionate, especially that first one or that that deep in the in the moment one is better than the lips. You know <laughs> what I mean? Because I'm, I'm just being honest with you. Because it's like you kissing it's like on the forehead, moment. beard. I promise you, because it's like most women, they usually expect that. You know what I mean? When you in that moment, you lock out and everything else. It's kind of a mutual moment. You kind of feed off each other's energy before you lean in and you, you gently caress them lips. But that that lock you in your eyes or that passionate kid on the forehead, a lot of that comes with like love. That if you just do to a girl you dating or y'all been hanging out or I really, really like him or her type thing. When the man usually does something like that, it's, you know, you lay and you sleep and he watching you sleep. He like. Well, Let see. me explain something to you, fabulous. The whole forehead kiss thing, I've done that before. That, that, that is something I have done. But the, the whole thing about the forehead kiss is it's unexpected. That's oh, right. Man. All right. Well, I'm going to try it on a man. Okay, so I'm let me ask Anson this. Hold on, Dr. Fab. As Dr. Um, Anson, so what did you mean when you, what were your intentions when you kissed her on the forehead? Um, Since it's so, so deep, what, what were you, what was were it you like feeling? a good night kiss or was this like a heating up to the moment kiss? This yeah, I need to a, understand that. Okay. When I, I the, 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 times, kiss. the time, the times when I've done it, not every time, but I've done it for, the purpose of being unexpected. So, yeah, you might have expected me to get on your neck or your ear or your mouth or whatever, but to do something unexpected as a man usually leads to better results. So my purpose mm. was to do what I want to do, but get to it in a different way. Okay. You're teasing me now. You're letting them know that you like them, but you're not going to give in, you know, to them um, at that moment. You kiss okay. them or you walk away. 
Okay. Okay. So, so say you say you went on a date. Say you went on a date. Say you went on a date and you walked the young lady to the door. Was a kiss on the forehead to say good night or let me in? Whatever she decides. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's it is. What were you were you trying to get in? Or you were like trying to say, hey, we had a good time, but I'm not ready for this yet. So I'm gonna kiss you on the well, head and walk away. Well, see, yeah. Well, what the misconception because, is because I've gotten kissed on the forehead, and it was not a, it wasn't a surprise, it wasn't a turn on, it was just good night. Yeah, so that made me, me think. You, let me that ask made me think of my dad. Well, let me ask you this. Were you confused or did you know what the forehead kiss meant? No, I wasn't confused. I it. probably didn't know what the forehead kiss meant because it didn't move me in a way that it didn't turn me on. It was like, okay, good night. So it threw, a it kiss on the off. forehead to me is the same right. thing. As, huh. I don't oh, know. Okay, better he question. He didn't do it right. What, what, no, he didn't do it right. Maybe the question water. would be a better question would be, did you expect it? <laughs> no, but I wouldn't have expected him to grab my hand and kiss my hand either, or kiss me on the neck, or kiss now kissing me on the neck means more than kissing on the forehead. I, yeah, I can it. I concur, but the whole purpose uh, okay, was okay, okay. The whole kissing the whole me on my neck would be done, but the whole reason why <laughs> it was done is because you did not expect it. That's the key. But like well, Leanne says, it was not a turn it, on for her because majority right. Of it was probably like good night. He was being a gentleman and he didn't right. want to move further because he was like, I don't want to kiss on her face. I don't want to kiss in her lip. I don't. I'm a kiss either hand or forehead saying I enjoy myself. And that um, to be he was waiting for you to make the next step, Leanne. He was waiting for you right. to make the next step. Right. He was just, he was throwing a soft throw like so. Yep. No, you not kissing me on my forehead. That's slam the door and go to bed. And that's exactly <laughs> what was was his intent was. He won't be, be too aggressive. His intent was to see what your reaction man. was. That's why he kissed you on your forehead. Now, if he would have sensed you that turn, if he would have saw that turned you on, yeah, I'm pretty sure something else would have happened. Okay. Well, Leanne, so what like, if he kissed you on the hand? Would, would that, like, is that a turn that on? Guy. When they kiss you on the forehead, it's a sign that they care about you and they're true to you. Yeah. They're Have really y'all not seen you. Love Jones? They respect <laughs> you. That's Wait a minute. You talk about the best man too now. The best man did a kiss on the forehead too. That's true. But okay. Love Jones was about to kiss on the forehead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I missed out. Yeah, that just was it just don't mean anything. Go Mr. ahead, Beard. Beard. You got I your hand Beard. up, and then we coming to you, Action Jackson. I'm ready. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I got cut out. I just got home. But I was saying this definitely after listening to y'all. Y'all miss y'all missed the connection, and that's why it felt so weird. You missed the connection and, and everything that usually comes with it. A kiss on the forehead could be something as sensual or as sexual as it's meant to be, and it only is only on. Con with the connection between the two people. If I'm watching my lady sleep, you know what I mean? I may kiss on her forehead. It's a soft kiss. It's a kiss of admiration. No, but y'all already in the bed together. That's we what I'm about. talking about no, now. No, 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 no. We in the I'm bed. The I'm out the bed. You I'm leaving. Move. I'm leaving. No, but we already, we are more than just friends. I'm talking about... Okay. So, so I, I I'm got talking about like in that beginning stage. Yes. Okay, so, in that so beginning I'm, stage. I'm you. Have, have you ever seen somebody embrace and kind of really didn't know how to feel, but you know, I was feeling you and I feel like I feel your energy. I feel like I feel your aura. The first thing I'm doing if I'm holding you, first thing I actually do is kiss you on the forehead. Depending on that's me conveying my affection to you and hoping you're receiving it too. If you look up at me or you accept that from me, the next thing I'm kissing is your lips. It's not a friend thing. It's not necessarily a uh um, well, I'll kiss my 12-year-old daughter, go to school type thing. It's the passion that comes with it. The fact that I hold it on your forehead for another two to three seconds longer than you would a pop kiss. It's 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 um the message and the emotions that flows with it. Kind of like you can kiss your man or your husband or your wife, uh, give them a pop kiss and kiss out the door, but it's completely different from a candle night dinner and you know you're trying to set the mood and you really feeling them and you give them that kiss at that point. 
the passion is different with it. The flow is different with it. The energy is different. He know that you on one or you know that she on one type thing. It's the same thing. It's it's more of, of a loving and endearment with, in addition to the passionate kiss. It's all on the feeling and how you feel at that moment and how y'all register. It can be awkward if two people ain't connected like that. And it could be awkward if two people ain't on that same wavelength. But when you got two people that's clicking and you feel my energy, you feel my emotions, you feel, you know what I'm saying? The um the I don't want to say the negative, but you feel the the energy radiating from me and you receiving that, that's 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 a a gateway into a whole lot of problems and pleasure at the same time. Oh, did you say that <laughs> radiating energy? Boy, you problems you and pleasure. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's right, love. I'm going to invite you be at the Thanksgiving yeah. dinner, but I'm going to let you stay home because you might come over here trying to lick somebody on the forehead. <laughs> I'm just teasing. You know, you're more than welcome to come. More than welcome to come. But I'm going to find you a young chick to lick on the forehead. Okay. Now, I'm coming on back over here to old Action Jacks. Yeah. So my thought is, I think it's possible Right to have a platonic relationship, but if the woman crossed the line, most men will fall for the trap. To you know, to cross the line. Can you hear me? Hello. We can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. I can hear you fine. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, can. I said most men will try not to cross the line, but if the woman make the move, they'll fall short and commit the act. Like like Dr. Fields would always say. 11.58 after the club, having a good time. She's there. Y'all vibing. Most likely going to do it. And then the next day, like, damn, what I just do, you know, uh, cross the line and hopefully I can work past it. Nah, you know I, mean? I don't see that. If you hang out with your, if you attract to the person, y'all have good friends, y'all went out to a, a club or an event and late at night and the woman make the move and she looking good, stuff will go down. Because you, if your body's having an urge and you want to release some stress, and the woman's feeling you, it's gonna happen. And a few drinks, you're gonna blame on the alcohol the next day. So wait a minute. So wait a minute, Action Jackson. You saying you picking her up in the club? See, I missed it. No, no, no. You, if you're friend, welcome, you're, you're Sandy. Come Sandy no, was calling to together. get the link, y'all. Welcome, Sandy. But check this out. I missed what you said. But you meet a girl in the club. I got no, no, girl, you met club. A platonic relationship, be a good friend. Y'all going out. Y'all went out to an event. Y'all went into a party, and y'all drinking. Y'all gonna blame on the alcohol. If she's looking attractive, you looking good. Vice versa. Y'all may have dancing a good time, and stuff happens. And she just happened to rub up on you. Yeah, and, and that's that that flagged your ship. But if y'all if, if you're find your friend attractive, and you think to yourself like, well, if she looks good and she's a, a great catch, why not roll the dice? And the next day, my alcohol. Huh? Everybody know after the club, you got some drinks. No, but it's your friend. It, 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 remember, it's your action. friend. You have a, a platonic relationship, right? You're a good friend, but things happen. You know, you didn't plan for it. Mm. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask Sandy. No one ever plans to lust after a person. Right, right. But if, so, Sandy, let me ask you this. We're talking about the platonic relationship, right? And with that being said, you all you got a physical attraction to this individual. Do you think that you would still stay as a platonic relationship, or do you think ultimately you would cross the line to love and lust? Do you have any scenario or anything that ever happened like that? And you're on mute, so unmute and tell me what's on your mind, Sandy. Okay, so I'm gonna say this. Love and lust are two different things. Uh -huh. So you can lust and engage in a, a sexual experience. And it may not lead to forever and shit like that. So which is okay. It could just be a nice sexual experience. It could be a bad sexual experience. You could cross the line. But the friendship is solid. It can withstand whatever experience that sexual connection brings. So. You know, um, I like to think that life brings experiences and we have to, I've, I've been learning lately to, 
respect my experiences, whether good, bad, or indifferent, because there were people or place in your lives to grow and elevate and to learn from. So we become better versions of ourselves. So whether you cross the line with a, a, a friend, I mean, it, so you to do me, think you can snap back and just still go on being friends? You know, it, it, like I can, you know what I'm saying? It, we, we can't speak for other people. You know what I'm saying? So if that person is truly your friend, being your friend, I want the best for you. And if the best for you is not me, that's okay. That's what a friend is. You know what I'm saying? So we can understand that. So, so my, it's, it's no, well, you know, it's... My experience with that but is... Say, but say that's your best friend, Cassandra. That's mm -hmm. your best friend. You're your mm -hmm. ride or die, and mm -hmm. y'all are like brother sister, but gain a, an attraction toward each other. And once mm -hmm. y'all sleep together, you think you could still be that ride or die, just friends? I could. He couldn't. I've had experience. I could. Um, because I can't I, do I, that. But see, I like. <sighs> Come on and tell us, Sandy. I feel it deep. Come on and give it to me. I know you got okay. to tell secrets. I, I I can. Um, it, it's it's. I'm a I'm a boys mom. Okay, so I don't know if that has anything to do with anything, but I'm a boys mom, and I don't tie my heart and my emotions to my my sex. I do. I don't. I, we gonna tie it to, um, experiences. So I had a friend, a platonic friend. He was a hoe all through college. Let me tell you something. That boy, he was hoe. He was hoe. But he was a good dude. He was a good dude, good dude, good dude. Um, But he did what I think people should do in college. You need to go through your whole phase while you're in college, before you have kids, before you get married. You got to kind of figure out who you are sexually and stuff like that. It, it's an exploration stage. But a lot of times, a lot of people will try to lock down and find who they're going to marry in their college years. You know, and um, some win at it, some, it, some don't, whatever. You're still in an exploration stage. You got to think you're 18, 19, 20, 21. You're still young, you know, in, the, in that, in that, in that stage. And he would beat women that would try to lock him down to, he was, he, he was, he was, he was, he was just a cool dude, you know what I'm saying? Doing what he's supposed to do. Go to school, he fuck. And then he go to class, then he fuck. You know, he's just living his life. Mm -hmm. And then... What, but, made, what made you test the waters? What made me... You gained an attraction. You gained an attraction. Let me tell you something. I didn't test the waters until like decades later, right? We test the waters and it was not a good experience for me. And so what it wasn't, what he said, like he wanted to, you know, do the, all that, the eating the ass and all this. Like he was doing like 10 over the 10 shit. I'm like, oh my God, I don't want that. I Like I was telling him to stop. He wouldn't stop. So we had a conversation after that. I'm like, <laughs> I'm telling you to stop and you're not stopping. And like, I'm like, you just doing whatever you want to do. That's like, I do not like it. And he was like, um. You know, the women I like, you know, the, I've done that. They like what I did. I'm like, okay, they like that. But I'm telling you, I didn't like it. You know what I'm saying? I don't like, I told you to stop and you didn't stop. And what he did, he sent me an article via text. He sent him an article of, of why women like the shit that he was trying to do to me that, that night. I'm like, oh, you sending me this article. But what I liked about our conversation is we were, to, we were able to talk instantly after the sexual you know encounter and i didn't hold back what i didn't like and then he didn't hold back why he did what he did however um we did stop talking for a while for maybe a good six seven months or something like that and then he called me back and he apologized he said i want to apologize because he had been with whoever woman they were saying the same thing i was saying so I'm like, I'm not telling you because I, 
I was speaking to him as a friend. Like we did cross this line because, you know, I'm horny. I, 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 I desire sex. I desire penetration. I desire these things and I trust him, but we had a disconnect, but we were able to talk. I was able to speak my truth. He was able to speak his truth. We did not see eye to eye at that moment, but later on that in, in that year or whatever, six months later, you know, he did a call and apologize and that he forced what he wanted from me. He said, I fantasize about you so much that when I got the opportunity, I just let loose on what I wanted from you, not considering what you wanted. So he, it was awkward really, because if he stayed away for six months, it was an awkward feeling there. No, 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 he 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 went on and started screwing ever whoever he was screwing at the time. So he he wasn't, but he just got the same. You know, somebody else, somebody, some other woman told him, "What you're doing is too much. I don't want what you're doing. You're projecting because you want to do, <laughs> you want to do that, but she's not ready for that. Okay, so you need to read her." to see what she's ready for before you start imposing your desires about her, you know, in that situation. Mm. You got to read the situation. So it's not just about me. Like I'm, I'm like that interaction that me and him had, I, like if he would have learned, he would have learned to do that, to read the woman he was with. Don't project because Susie or Tanya or whoever they liked that so I'm gonna do what Tanya likes on on um Trina you know what I'm saying you gotta read who you're with. it's like reading your audience and so I'm able to have this conversation because my emotions are not involved right now it's we're friends and I care about you and what you're doing is wasn't right um, but I'm not going to say that was almost like a rape tactic because you were both consenting adults. It's j it just went to the next level with something you didn't particularly care for. So that's right. Really, but I'm glad you all were able to talk through that situation. Yeah. And because and, of our friendship, right. we're able to talk through it. You know what I'm saying? So I understand who he is as an individual. And that's why I think the friendship is. It's not that, oh, I have sex with my friend. Oh my gosh, I want him. Now I understand who he is. Period. I he I, I he doesn't have to sell me a representative because I understand who he is. Tina Turner said, and I love Tina Turner, rest in peace. Tina Turner, when she got involved with Ike, she said they were friends first, right? But she also said when they crossed the line of that friendship. She knew what she was dealing with. She knew that he had a history of cheating on his the women or wives that he's with. He had a history of drug abuse. He had a history of abusing physically um, the woman he was with. So she said it's a matter of time before he did it to me. So she prepped herself for that. Not playing victim, because my coochie is not going to be better than the other coochie you was with. My whatever, like I understand not who you were. I still, I still took that risk. She and when she when he when he did it to her, she said, "I knew it was going to happen because I see who he is." Okay, okay, I can well, understand so do that. You, Sandy, do you think some of these like experienced women? ruin the men who are less experienced like do you think they totally you know de destroy their learning experience you know when it comes to sex no i i i think as an adult we're all responsible for our experiences like i i i um and if you guys ever have it, I, like I had one, I tried to have one one night stand, but it didn't last into a one night stand. But um, we talked. Elaborate, we Sandy. You say it didn't last for a one night stand. It, it's turned into two weeks, three weeks. 
No. So what it, we turn into a friend. Okay. So okay. what, what right. happened is that he wants to take the condom off. So, you know what I'm saying? So you I'm not. have mercy. Right. You know, like we're not going to, I'm not going to mess with you about taking the condom off. We're not. So we, be, we became friends. Lo and behold, so he got some girl pregnant. He don't like, he don't want to get pregnant. But, you know, I said, see, that's what, that's what would happen to me and him if, you know, and he doesn't, everybody's responsible for their own sexual experiences. We're mm -hmm. adults. We're, we're all responsible. We understand if I want to roll that, I know when I roll that dice and I said, okay, I'm a, I must have sex with him without a condom. I'm going to roll that dice as an because I'm a, a full grown consensual adult. I understand that. So these men, no, no woman is, is responsible for his sexual, for his sexual, you know, green lights. What he consented to do, what he wanted to do. Like these are not young boys. These are grown men. They know what they're doing. They under understand the risk. They know she's not on birth control. They know she want, they want to go in raw and they nut whatever. So it blasts of me when they, when they get a woman pregnant, like, Oh my gosh, you pregnant. Like, you know, like we're not stupid though. But you know so what? Not... I, you know what I love about you, Sandy, you just bring it the way you bring it. You all yeah, cut really your corners. Well, really well. You, the truth. I, I just love that about you, Sandy. It's not yeah, but you Sandy, I have a serious question for you. But the okay. question Lady T asked was you don't think it ruined it for, for the next woman. No, what ruins it if he doesn't learn? Okay, that's what a, we have to every connection we have, we have to learn a lesson. So he's like, it's not a woman's fault. It's not a man's fault. As as responsible adults as we all should be, we have to own our decisions. We have to recognize the lessons. Like if you don't learn the lesson that you need to learn, you're going to repeat the same shit with a different person. Well, it it's called the same script, learns. different cast. It also depends on what he learns from the situation. So what you feel he should learn, he may have learned something completely different. He might have a whole different takeaway from that. So Wait, say that again? What I'm saying is that you said it's only a problem if he doesn't learn. But what, exactly. he, learns, but what he learns from the situation may be different from what you think he should have learned. So that could ruin him. If he learned something different from the situation, opposed to it learning, can, it can make you're right, Anson. It can it can make him harder. It can harden right. him, like to become. But you know what? And if he's that harder, guy, he can let me tell you something. Him... And if he is harder, you got to understand. We 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 choose what people we 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 and we we let into our 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 body, our energy, our mind. We choose that. And I bring up Tina Turner. If you want to entertain that, so she's like, okay, I understand. I'm attracted to Ike, but I know what he comes with. He does drugs. He cheats. He's like, you have to understand that you under, and you have to brace yourself for that experience with him because he's shown he has given that experience several times over to different people. So do you so don't think, think that you're she knew he gonna... beat? Did do you think she knew he beat up on? Yeah, women? she said she knew that. She knew that. She said it was a matter of time before he started hitting me too. But when you get engulfed in that, that's when it's harder to leave because now you got kids. You're emotionally, you're more emotionally invested. You're this, and it's hard. She said I had to pick myself to and get to my tolerance where I had enough. When well, mm. she had a baby by him, she wasn't the first woman to have a baby by him. She wasn't mm. the first, like she understood, like logically, she said, I know this. I know this. You can't suck his dick better than the other woman. You can't, like, you understand <laughs> you are not, we're not that different. Ooh. We're not. Because mm. even with Kanye, you go, okay, one, I'm gonna use Kanye's example. A lot of women that Kanye dated before Kim, they weren't on his financial level. 
Then he got with a woman that can afford to buy him a Maybach and who afforded to give him expensive gifts. He didn't have to financially um, fund her lifestyle. You know, she helped him out a lot financially. So that was a different experience for him. So once he got used to being with a woman that can match him financially, guess what? She wasn't no different. The coochie was the same as the next coochie. I like exactly. that. Coochie. They don't have no face and they all pink in the middle. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yeah. girl, you ladies are uh, wrong this evening. Wait, Harrison, wait. You got uh, your hand up. I can't wait to hear what yeah, Anthony got to say. And then I have a question. Oh, I'm glad y'all finally saw it. But uh, no, it, it, was, it was it was on that lollipop, that boom, boom. What is it? Boom pop. Bomb pops, man. Bomb, bomb pops. pops. <laughs> bomb. Bomb, bomb pops. pops. Okay, okay, okay. But um, I want to say that uh, Sandy said something that I live by that I truly believe in. Um, one is that I I truly believe. No, I don't believe I know that you are no more than the sum of your experiences. That's all you are. No, no matter who you are, you're just the sum of everything that you went through. So you're some of your own experiences. So Correct. thank you, Sandy, for pointing that out because I, I truly believe that. But uh, what I was raising my hand for is that, you know, I've been quiet and listened to everyone talk this whole night. But one thing that you all fail to realize is that every friendship is platonic until it's not. So everyone you meet is platonic sure, sure. until you cross that line. So to ask the question, can you be platonic friends with someone? Of course you can. Everyone here is. As far as I know, we all ain't did nothing with nothing but each other. So we're all platonic. <laughs> Dr. Phil Let, me now, let's let me stop. Right. Feel good. I'm just teasing, man. I don't want to put you out there like that. That's all right. That's but, all right. Okay. But every every friendship that one has is platonic until it's not. Mm. And that is a fact. But that's why I said that's why I said last week, you know, some, some a lot of times people turn a uh, uh, molehill into a mountain, and okay. this is a perfect example of turning a molehill into a mountain because everybody that you call friend is platonic until you cross that line. Okay. And even when you cross the line, does it mean it's a detriment to the? That's an experience. Like me, we had experience and. But I like the fact that we can be able to talk candidly and openly and honestly. But that you know, shows that's the maturity. whole point of it. That shows your maturity. What I'm saying is that, yes, the, the question is obvious. Yes, you can fall in love or in lust with a friend. And that is platonic simply because every friend is platonic until you cross that line. And that mm -hmm. comes down to responsibility. That's your responsibility to either make sure that stays stays platonic or or changes but uh, but well, even if it changes our... you guys do cross the line does it mean it's a detriment to the relationship it doesn't I mean that like, oh my gosh yeah, that's my husband that's my wife and I it agree. could be and it may not be it should not be the end of a relationship a I friendship agree. i agree but everyone on here is upscale love for you if you oh, upscale right loving now. someone it was platonic before you got to that love part okay so I mean, we all are seeking to cross that line with somebody mm. well let me ask sandy this um million dollar question sandy have mm. you ever had a man grab your face and kiss <laughs> your forehead and it turned you on can uh, are we still on this forehead that's, thing? Uh, that's not on this forehead. Wait, wait, the forehead. forehead. Let me tell you something. It's <laughs> because you know I haven't experienced that. My okay, so no, I, like as far as like I had a man grab me. It was missionary, and he whispered in my ear mid stroke that he wouldn't hurt me, and he told me he had bipolar. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So yes, what four idiot. Idiot. definitely don't turn home. <laughs> so I, I mean, you know, I've been trying to get past that for decades now. That, 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 he, that, he yeah, that, 
like thing in my head. Like, I, what did he say? His <laughs> I didn't hear you distinguish. What did you say? I'm I'm trying to figure out what the hell he thought that was gonna produce. <laughs> Talking to her like that. There, there are certain she things thought, that you he say thought to he thought that she was gonna get that bipolar sexual experience. That's <laughs> well, what, obviously he probably thought she was gonna make me up and choke me. He, that's the experience he it's, wanted her to tell. It. It's two different experiences: my straight head and my bipolar head. I, I don't know. That that was I just mom, don't understand. I, there's just certain things you don't bring up in mid stroke. I'm sorry. That's just something you don't bring up. You know oh, that, that. True, but I have been, showing, I've been I've been traumatized by was. that experience forever. You should be. You should be. But listen, right? Remember she said it was missionary position first. Maybe we'll try and change it up later on in the in the act, right? Stop, stop it, stop. Nasty nah. J, you get it out all night. I'm trying to see the, I'm trying to see the man out. Nasty J helping the man out. Oh, I'm sorry. There's no help. Say, just, hey, I, I got more to, to offer. Well, you know Man, what? There's no help in that. That had to be a crazy mm. experience. So, um, Nasty J had his time. I see Special K had the exit stage, right? Now, everyone, listen, I told you all when we came on, I'm so excited about leaving for the cruise next week, Thursday. There will be no tantalizing talk next Thursday. However, you may want to keep your eye glued to the prize because we're going to give y'all some live clips from the fantastic voyage of Upscale Love's cruise next week. So we won't be here. We will be on the seven seas, honey, just having a time. And I'm going to be walking through, look, look, I'm going to be walking through, folding my hair back like this there. See if I'm going to get a lick on my forehead. Right. I'm going to say, I'm waiting. Listen, maybe y'all put the word out, please. A sexy, tall, good smelling man. So what you say, six, two, four, you know? Anything over six. <laughs> Kiss her on her forehead the appropriate way. Uh-uh, listen, and listen, let her y'all. vagina give, you know, butterflies. Uh-uh, but listen, listen, listen. I would probably headbutt that person. Because, you know, that I'm not works. expecting nobody to kiss me on my forehead. So I would probably just just headbutt. Because that, I, 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 I guess because I haven't experienced that <laughs> like that, that's just not a turn on to me. For some strange reason, I can't even visualize that as a turn on. <laughs> but if beer one tell me that's a turn on, but I'm gonna try this, y'all. I ain't gonna put it out there, but I'm. Mm -hmm, I, I got something up my sleeve. Got something up my sleeve. I just want y'all to make sure that while y'all on this cruise, mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of waves that are being made, and I ain't talking about from the ocean either. Ooh, you ain't got the. Ooh, you ain't got the. Ooh, ain't, ooh, ooh. Okay, Barry White. <laughs> Mm -hmm. right, all right all right so with that being said you all it is 9 46 we normally get out at 10 but guess what y'all as i said i'm so excited i need to start packing i need to start doing a whole lot of something and i'm going to allow um uh, distinguished brother to say his thank yous then lady t coming on back to nasty j and we're going to get out of here and be on our way. And once Wait, again, Dr. Fab, let's see if the panelists have anything to say tonight. Oh, but go right ahead. Go right ahead. I'll I stay here until the very end. Tonight? Any questions, comments, or concerns? Mm -mm. Shayla, Shayla. Um, who else? I saw a Shayla, a Takara. Is it Takara? Andrew Jack. That's a nice name. And Sunshine, boy, I'm just dying to see who Sunshine is. But next time, Sunshine, who is Sunshine? Where are you from? Are you from the 305, Sunshine? You can type it in the you can type it in the chat if yeah, you don't want to see it. Yeah, type it in the chat because I type like it to in represent the chat. my crew. And Shayla Williams, can you type? Let me try Sunshine. Okay, just type it in the chat where you're from, everyone. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Oh, okay. We had the infamous Broderick Wells on here, but I see he done 
he done moved on because he got scared somebody was gonna lick him on his forehead. So Probably. that's what it was. That's what it was. But anyway, um, Dr. Forehead, Pam, you just said something. It was supposed to be kiss on the forehead, oh, I, but if, oh, if no, a man lick you on the forehead, licking. that's a whole other story. Ooh, okay. Yeah, got licking on the brain. That's, that's all. I, yeah, I'm I got saying. licking on. I got licking, licking on. Nobody licked licking me on my forehead. I'm sorry. Okay, so go ahead, um, Lady T. So what answer? What's that meaning? If they lick you on the forehead, <laughs> it's going down. That's like licking toes. Don't uh uh. It's all. It's all what already does it mean? What does it mean when they look at your forehead? I hear that. No. I mean that means it's already it's going down. The forehead. You have to let Beer One explain or Anson the um forehead kiss. Beer One. Beard one. Yes, ma'am. Cassandra wasn't here when you talked about the kiss um, on the forehead. Can you give her an instant replay? Um, honestly, it's it's just meant to be a um a secondary sensual connection between two people, you know, and it's just like anything else. It's definitely dependent upon. The emotions, the oars, the vibes, the feelings of two people that want to be close. You know, anytime I've ever gave somebody a kiss on the forehead, it was definitely um, after they had a situation or while holding them close, embracing them. And it's usually preceded by a kiss on the lips. And it's just another, it's it's the vibe, you know what I mean? It's, I think um, Lady T said it too, is sometimes you can, um, I don't know how to explain it. It's it's like a form of foreplay. It's it's like you're you're letting him or her know that hey, I care for you, I want you, and I respect you. So I'm not gonna you know disrespect you by kissing and flopping or whatever. That don't it doesn't really Love mean it. anything. But when I gently touch you know your body, then I'm letting you know that I care for you and you walk away. That's it. I'm, I'm confused on how people are so confused by it because <laughs> women like to be kissed on the arm. They like to be kissed on the neck. They like to be kissed on the thigh. They like to be kissed everywhere. But for some reason, kissing the forehead is triggering. It they could be because no one's doing it to them. They yeah. That's what no I'm saying. I ain't never experienced but, that yet. But it's it, always it, a first time. It ain't like I walked up to you and was like, hey, baby, how you doing? Mwah, on your forehead. <laughs> that ain't going to do nothing for nobody. <laughs> you know that I mean? is it's, it's, it's definitely like a, a aura in the moment. You know what I'm saying? You you feel like you you damn near inside my rib cage when I'm trying to pull you in. <laughs> it's, it's not just a one kiss and then, you know, that's the end of it. It's usually proceeded or, you know, more kisses are usually after it. But it's the, it's the sensual feeling of the mood that you got when you do it. Okay, okay. I so guess I'm going to see how well it works. I'm going to put it to a test, y'all. I'm going to see. I'm going to put this in action. And then I'm going to come back and tell y'all the way a woman. You're going to do it on the cruise. You're going to do it on the cruise when you find now, that listen, 62, be, brother. Now, Leanne, don't be trying to put no business out there in the street. Stay in your lane, Leanne. I am saying <laughs> Wait, five I don't five mind five driving across the line. line. I don't mind changing <laughs> lanes sometimes. Woo! No, I'm going to just have a little prayer meeting. That's all we're going to do. Hallelujah. But anyway, let me stop joking. Everything going to be all right. And when I Amen. come back and I tell you all the experience of the forehead kiss, then I'll be able to write a documentary. And there you have it. So, distinguished brother, you can say your goodbyes and your woo-woo-woos. And then, Lady T, please say yours. And we're going to call this a night. And remember, next week, we will not be on. But we'll come back the following week. And we'll tell you all about it. So go ahead, distinguished brother. I just want to say I'm glad everybody had a good time tonight. Interesting conversation. I know there are going to be a lot of foreheads licked on mm -hmm. this cruise. And I want you all to Licking, licking, licking. Lick. Hey, you know, sometimes lick. licking is a prerequisite. So just go on, on and stop lick. playing. There was no, 
And she knows the difference between a kiss and a lick, and she specifically wants that lick. So y'all make sure that you line up some tongues that are ready to lick a forehead. That's all I'm going to say. Ah, uh, <laughs> Jackie Poo Poo now. Y'all mm. have a good evening. All mm -hmm. right. Lady T? You know what? This has been a very fun night. Thank you all for coming on, and we will see you week after next. And I am so excited. I cannot wait, wait, wait to get baptized by Upscale Love for you cruise. Do you all know this is her first cruise? She has never been on a cruise. So I do I'm not. Excited. I I'm do excited not. Excited to baptize her. Uh huh. She better get some drama me for her and them babies, cause we already got that covered, Leanne. So, okay. um, you know, I like to be in control. So I don't want to be stationary, um, anywhere. I like to leave and come as I please. So compliments of upscale love for you. <laughs> oh. We don't hear you, Lady T. You went off in the gray blue yonder. We didn't hear a mm -hmm. word you said. Okay, well, we anyway, we still can't hear, and she's still just talking. But anywho, we're going okay. to say good night. Okay, now you back. Okay, sorry about that, guys. You know, I have a speaker issue. So um, I just want to say thank you all, and I look forward to coming on a cruise, having fun, and I will have my my entire family with me. So, All right. Well, good night, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you upon our return. And until then, you all, guess what? I got to give it to you. Smooches. Mwah. Good night. Good night. Good night.